Hey everybody, so you are using Firebase Firestore as your backend for your app and you want to be able to set up regularly scheduled backups and be able to restore the data if necessary. So in this video, I am going to show you the quickest and easiest way to do that. We have here an app and we have the Cloud Firestore backend and we have a collection of vacation documents. And we want to do regular backups of our Firestore database. And if you do a search uh, for this topic, you're probably gonna come up with a lot of different methods, uh, some using cron jobs, some uh, examples use GitHub actions, some exporting to JSON files, you got some NPM packages out there to, to help make it easier. But there's actually a really easy way to do this using uh, scheduled cloud functions, which are relatively new. Um, so let's uh, let's do this. Go to the URL https cloud.google.com slash firestore slash docs slash solutions slash schedule export. And alternatively, you can just Google Firestore Schedule Export Google Cloud or something similar, and it should be uh, this first result here, Scheduling Data Exports. And make sure that you are logged in with the same Google account that your Firebase project is under. And we see here the title, Scheduling Data Exports. This page describes how to schedule exports of your Firebase, of your Firestore data. So, hey, that looks like uh, just what we need, right? But uh, where are we? Um, doesn't look like the Firebase documentation that you're probably used to. And that's because we are kind of taking a step down in abstraction. So Firebase is more of a, an abstraction on top of um, Google Cloud products. You probably already know that Firebase is run by Google, but what you may not know is that the Firebase storage and databases are built on top of Google Cloud. So what is Google Cloud? If you uh, just go to cloud.google.com, you'll see here that um, it's a service that a lot of companies use, as you can see here. Um, it's just kind of them showing off all of their stuff, um, but they have like a bajillion solutions of different products. You got AI and machine learning, API, compute containers, data analytics, yada, 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 tons and tons of stuff. And so Firebase, what you're probably most familiar with, um, shares or is built on a lot of Google Cloud computing services. So that's where we are here and it can be a little intimidating at first and easy to get lost. So I will walk you through step by step. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do, there's a, f a few uh, prerequisites to do this. Your Firebase project has to be on a paid um, plan. So you need to make sure if you come back here to your project overview uh, right here. So you might be on the Spark plan and to be able to do this, you need to be on the Blaze pay as you go plan. Um, it includes free usage calculated daily and the ability to extend your project with Google Cloud Platform, which is what we need to be able to do. Now, don't worry about actually being charged for this stuff. Um, if your database is small, um, you will most likely never actually be billed by Firebase. All right, so back to our guide here. So um, enable billing, make sure you you get on the Blaze plan and then come back here. Okay, so let's see here. Export operations require a destination cloud storage bucket. So we need somewhere to put our export of our backup, right? So this is pretty easy. Just click on this link, create a cloud storage bucket and we're going to do it via the console, okay? So there are a few ways. You could do it um, using the gsutil commands, a REST API. Here's some code samples how to do it um, via their APIs like Node.js. Um, for right now, we're just gonna do it with our console. So say, open the cloud storage browser. And then here, make sure that you have your uh, Firebase project selected. And we are going to say, create bucket. Now the naming here, it says pick a globally unique permanent name. Okay, so this has to be globally unique. So let's see if I can get this on the first try. I'm gonna say bon voyage dash YouTube 
backups. Let's hit continue. All right, so that's good. Um, the defaults for most of these are fine, so choose where to store your data. We're gonna go with multi-region, continue, and then uh, choose a default storage class for your data. Storage class sets costs for storage, retrieval, and operations. So pick a default storage class based on how long you plan to store your data and how often it will be accessed. So if you're looking to create backups that are gonna be like long, long, long term, then you would go with archive or cold line. So this is the best for disaster recovery and data access less than once a quarter. Um, this is probably the one that you would want. Um, we're gonna go with standard, and this is just because we're gonna be accessing this a few times during this uh, tutorial. So this is best for short-term storage and frequently accessed data. All right, so say continue. And then for the access control, I'm gonna pick uniform and say continue. And then for the advanced settings encryption, we want the Google managed key. And then we're going to say create. Great, so now we have our bucket created. I'm just gonna copy the name here because we're going to need it in a second. And then let's come back to our guide here. And the next step is to actually create the cloud function that is going to schedule the exports on a daily basis or whatever schedule you decide. And we're going to do it via the Firebase CLI. You could also do it via Cloud Console if you don't have a uh, Firebase Cloud Functions repository already set up. Now I'm not going to go over the entire process of setting up a Firebase Cloud Functions project, but I will link the excellent um, YouTube series with Doug Stevens um, on getting started with Cloud Functions. And the very first video will have you up and running with, uh, with Cloud Functions, and then you'll be able to follow along from there. All right, so let's come back here. And all we need to do is copy this code here. So I'm just gonna say copy code sample. And then once you have your Firebase Cloud Functions project set up, this is uh, the existing Cloud Functions that I have for this project. We're just gonna come down here and I'm going to paste what we had there. And I already had um, functions imported in this project. So I'm gonna delete that and then right here, the bucket name, const bucket, bucket name, this is where we need to put in the name of the bucket that we created earlier. In my case, I said bon voyage dash ut dash yt for YouTube dash backup. And then just to kind of walk through what we have here, this is how you create and name a cloud function. And then to have it be a scheduled cloud function, you say functions.pubsub.schedule. And then right here is how you can tell it how often to run the schedule. And then the rest of this is just uh, setting up what it needs to create and export your Firestore database. And there's a couple of things here that you can change. You could change the collection IDs. So it says leave collection IDs empty to export all collections or set to a list of collection IDs to export. Collection IDs, users, posts, for example. So if we only wanted, going back to our Firestore database, if we only wanted the vacations or just the users, then we could say right in here, vacations, and that would only export the vacations collection. Um, we're gonna say we want all of the data. So we're gonna leave it blank. And that's pretty much all you gotta do. Super simple, you just need to replace your uh, bucket, set the schedule for what you want. Um, since we don't wanna wait 24 hours to see if this is working, I'm gonna say every two minutes. So every two minutes, we're going to generate a backup of my, uh, my Firestore database. Obviously, you wouldn't want that for a production app. Um, but uh, yeah, so this should be fine. I'm gonna save this and then the way we deploy, so I'm gonna say Firebase deploy dash dash only functions and then the name of the function right here and say enter. 
All right, so now this is going to deploy to our Firebase project. And while that is doing that, come back to our guide here. And there's one more step that we still need to do, which is provide the correct permissions for our cloud function. So it says here, give the cloud function permissions to start export operations and to write to your GCS bucket. Okay, so what we want to do here is uh, just open this cloud shell. That'll open up in a new tab and just give that a second to uh, kind of initialize itself. And what we're going to be doing is assigning our cloud data source import export admin role. And uh, so this is pretty easy. All we need to do is just follow these two steps here in the uh, G Cloud shell. And so it says here, provisioning your Google Cloud shell mach machine. Again, make sure that you're logged in with the correct um, Google account and that you have the correct Firebase project selected here. Okay, so the Cloud Shell is set up. So coming back here, what we need to do is replace the project ID. And it's pretty nice here. They have it so that you can just uh, edit your project ID and it'll populate in these other sections here. And so you can find your project ID here on the uh, Cloud Shell page. And it's gonna be right here, project ID. So I'm gonna copy that, come back over here, click and paste and then press enter. And you can see that the code snippets updated accordingly. And then we need to also update the bucket name. So clicking on that, you can paste in your bucket name as well and press enter. Now, all we need to do is copy this code sample, come back over here to our cloud shell page and paste that and press enter. And then it'll ask for authorization. You can say authorize. Very good, and then go back copy the second code snippet and then back to our cloud shell and paste that and press enter. And we should now be good to go. Now let's come back to our guide here and we can test this um, right away. We don't have to wait for those two minutes if, uh, if that hasn't already passed, I'm sure it has though. And we're going to open the cloud scheduler page and let's go ahead and actually come back to our browser storage and refresh this and see if that function has already run yet. Okay, nothing yet. So back here with our cloud scheduler, find your function and say run now. All right, so refreshing our bucket, we see that this has run actually a couple of times already and this is your backup. This has all of the data that your Firestore database contains. Okay, so that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Now, how to import that data? Say we have a catastrophic failure and, uh, and I've somehow accidentally deleted our entire vacations collection. Oh no. And now we want to restore the data using one of our backups. The way to do that is coming back to our tab that had our cloud shell, you simply run this command. You say gcloud firestore import and then the prefix gs colon slash slash and then you need the bucket name and uh, that is for this example bon voyage dash yt dash backup and then you need the object, the backup prefix, okay? The, the object prefix. And if you come to your browser, all right, and we want to uh, grab the first backup, copy that, come over here back to our shell and paste that and press enter. And depending on the size of the backup, um, you, this might take a while. But once that's done, if we come back over here and refresh, we should see, hey, there we go. Our vacations collection is back. How awesome is that? So there you go. That's how you can schedule data exports and then import a backup that you've already made. And uh, yeah, so it's not too bad. Just following these steps, enable billing, create a cloud storage bucket, create a cloud function, and then setting your access permissions 
And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please subscribe and hit that like button. And if you want to learn how to build this e-commerce app that you see here, then uh, head over to johnnybcodes.com. And I am doing a pre-sale right now. So uh, check out the coupon code in the description and uh, hope to see you in the next one.